I'm so grateful to your rector for this opportunity to be with the people of Christ Church Poughkeepsie on a night like this, in a time like this. In the name of the God who feeds us for all eternity, amen. If you're a Christian, you can't get away from this night. If you go to church, you can never put it out of your mind for very long, because every time we worship at the Eucharist, we're reminded of it. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. You know the rest by heart. He blessed the bread. He broke the bread. He gave his friends the bread to eat. He blessed a cup of wine and he passed it around for them to drink. And then he told them what it meant. This is my body, he tells them. This is my blood. It is the moment of the most profound communion they've ever experienced. The time when Jesus uses the bread and wine of the meal to speak of the gift of his own life, to spell out so that there could be no mistaking the meaning of his presence with them. My life is life for you. My life feeds you and nourishes you for all eternity. In that supper, Jesus shows them what communion means. It means shared life, life committed to one another, life lived as if they belonged to one another. Everything about Jesus came together in that supper. His vision of life as God would have us live it, drawn together in shalom. His certainty in the power of God's love. The bonds that held them together symbolized in the bread broken and the cup of wine shared. That evening was a parable of life in God's reign. The way it would be if God's dream came true if God's will were done on earth as it is in heaven. The scene of the disciples gathered around the table with Jesus is the image of the human community that God imagined when we were called into being. The image of creation restored, the gate to the garden thrown open, the celebration of life and freedom remembered as the Hebrew slaves ran into the sea and found their feet standing on dry ground. In Paul's words, we, many as we are, are one body, for we all share the one bread. The meal of God's bread and wine tells us all we need to know about who we are before God and before each other. Beloved children, every one of us, cared for and nurtured and embraced and fed with the very life of God. And then John's Gospel tells us that Jesus did something else. He washes his friend's feet. The teacher, the preacher, the prophet, the anointed one, the Lord, God's word in flesh and blood kneels at their feet and washes them. The leader serves the followers. The teacher serves the learners. The master serves the disciples. It seems to me that in that moment, every human assumption about power and authority is turned upside down because Jesus steps down from his position of leadership and instead becomes their friend. What this night has to tell us is rooted in everyday reality, because after all, what's more every day than eating and drinking and washing? Those are not only things we do every day. People who don't eat and drink aren't going to be alive for very long. They are a very basic reminder that we, just like the Jesus who was their host and ours, was flesh and blood, and we are flesh and blood. I think it's very significant 
that when Jesus has the most important message he wants to give us to grasp, he doesn't give us a sermon or write an essay. He gives people bread to eat and wine to drink, and he washes their feet. It's not just Jesus' thoughts or ideas that are involved. It's his hands, the hands he uses to bless the bread and the wine the hands he uses to break the bread and pass it around, the hand he uses to wash his disciples' feet, the hands that tomorrow will be nailed to the cross, the body that will be broken, the blood that will indeed be poured out. And tonight, this should be a time when our hands should be touching each other, giving each other a sign of peace, reaching out for a piece of bread, grasping a cup of wine, perhaps even washing somebody's feet. But tonight, none of that is happening. In fact, I'm about 8,000 miles away on the other side of the world, and it's already Good Friday here. And at this moment, I suspect that we're remarkably like the disciples at their meal with Jesus. I'm sure that some of us are lonely, some of us are angry, some of us are nearly despairing, and all of us are uncertain and frightened and wondering what on earth is going to happen to us and the people we care most about and to the world we call home. But I think there's more to the story of what Jesus did on this night, because what those stories also point us to is what it means to be a community, what it means to be in communion, especially in a time like this, when touching each other is the last thing we should be doing. Because what this night and these stories invite us to think about is exactly what is the nature of our communion? How does this night change our understanding of what it means to be together in Christ? What does this night tell us about how God relates to us and how we are called to relate to one another? If the Lord of the universe washes his friend's feet, what does that tell us about how we are to live together in this world and how we are to live in communion? What does this story call us to change in ourselves, in our world, in our life together? I keep thinking about that group around Jesus. Every human emotion is there. They were trying to remember that Passover time is supposed to be a celebration, but Jesus had created trouble in the temple, and they knew that the police and the Roman soldiers were on their guard. They were afraid for themselves, and they were afraid for Jesus. They couldn't imagine how terrible it would be if Jesus were to be taken from them, and yet they knew that Jesus expected that to happen. And they were confused. They thought that Jesus was making God's dream come true, and instead it looked as if their hopes were wrong. If Jesus was not going to make himself the king, then who was he? And who were they? And who is God? Every emotion is there, and every personality is there people whose names we've forgotten, people whose names we don't know because there were surely other people there even if they got left out of the paintings, people like Peter who spoke loudly of how brave he was, people who fell asleep even as Jesus was praying to be spared what he knew was coming. And they're all there and they're all welcome. And when Jesus wants to share the most profound truth about them and about us, 
He doesn't make them sit down one by one. He waits until they are all together because our life with God isn't a private affair at all. It happens when we are part of that body that we call our sisters and our brothers. Here at Mingma Theological College, we celebrate Maundy Thursday with a meal. There are students and staff and faculty and spouses and children and friends, and we eat and we drink wine, and then we break bread and we share a cup of wine, and there is singing and there are hugs, and then we go to the chapel and we strip it bare to the solemn words of Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But that didn't happen this year. And yet, and yet I am in Hong Kong and sharing this night with my friends in Poughkeepsie and you are in your houses, but you are also part of a network of friends and companions on the way who in this most challenging of times have chosen to stay close to each other. Some of you are on the front lines of the challenge and you know very well what the fear those disciples felt feels like. But tonight we are with you. Some of us are a long way from people we love, but tonight we are bound together and distance is dissolved in community. Even in times like these, we are blessed to live at a moment when community is not defined by who's sitting next to you, but by the spirit that holds us together, even when we can't touch each other. These days call us to ask us all over again, what does it mean to be among God's beloved children at a time like this? How can we celebrate our community, our communion, when we can't touch each other? How do we live the promise of this night that we share God's own life when the whole world is experiencing the valley of the shadows? Well, this is what Jesus said that night. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And just because we can't touch each other right now, doesn't make the love any less real because whatever happens, we still belong to each other. Some things never change. Amen.